Okay, let's talk about default gateways. Devices need the following information for network access, such as IP address, signet mask, and default gateway. When a host sends a packet to a device that is on the same IP network, the packet is forwarded out the host interface to the destination device. The router does not need to get involved. However, when the host sends a packet to a device on a different IP network, the packet is forwarded to the default gateway because the host device cannot communicate with devices outside of the local network. The default gateway is a device that routes traffic from the local network to devices on remote networks, such as devices on the internet. Now, let's identify how many broadcast domains you can find from this diagram. As I covered in the previous session, you should be able to answer. You will get four broadcast domains, right? Okay, let me draw the answers for you. You will get router 1 connecting to PC1 and PC2 will form one broadcast domain. Router 1 to router 2 will have another broadcast domain. Router 2 to router 3 will form another broadcast domain and router 3 to PC3 will have another broadcast domain. Now, from the PC1 to PC2, that belongs to the same broadcast domain, which is the same network that connecting to 192.168.10.0. For router 1 to router 2, we'll have another different network, which is configured as 192.168.11.0. Router 2 to Router 3 will have another network which is 192.168.12.0 and Router 3 to PC3 will configure as 192.168.13.0 If PC1 would like to ping to PC3, they belongs to the multiple networks, right? The different networks. So in this case, you need to have a default gateway. Now where should you put a default gateway? You should put a default gateway at the router 1, which is directly connected to your PC. So let me break this router 1 into two, because router 1 will have two interfaces. The first interface is configured as interface G0 slash 0, and with the IP address of 192.168.10.5, okay, here. And for this interface here, is uh, interface of G0 slash 1 is configured as 192.168.11.6 okay so this router one will have two interfaces one is 192.168.10.5 another one is 192.168.11.6 so if you want to ping from PC1 to PC3 so the gateway should configure at this interface here because this interface is actually a gateway for you to pass the packets from these incoming pops to the outgoing pops of this interface G0 slash 1. So you need to configure a gateway here. If you configure a gateway here, which is 192.168.11.6, the router 1 uh, will drop the packets. Okay, so how do you do this configuration? Your PC1 have to configure a default gateway, which is 192.168.10.5. Okay, all right, now I give you another example. If I want to route from PC3 to PC1, PC3 to PC1 is actually connecting to the router 3, okay? And this router 3 direct interfaces is interface G0 slash 0, and the IP address configure is 192.168.13.0. Now in this case, PC3 have to configure a default gateway, and the gateway address is 192.168.13.10. Okay? Alright, I give you another situation. PC1 would like to ping to PC2. Now, because they belong to a SAM broadcast domain, or we can call it a SAM network, which is 192.168.10.0 category, they do not need to have a default gateway. 
So sign network, you don't need to have a default gateway, but if you want to ping from a multiple networks, from one network to another network, you need to form, you need to configure a default gateway. Okay? Okay, let's answer these questions. With reference to the following topology diagrams, answer these questions. During the process of encapsulation, how does PC1 determine if the packet is destined for a host on a remote network? In other words, how do I know that PC1 uh, connecting to the PC3 is actually belongs to the same network or a different network? PC2 to PC1, how do you know that it's actually they belong to the same network or different network? Now, the first method I'm using just now is using a broadcast domain, right? You circle the broadcast domain, then you will know whether they belong to the same network or not. Okay, the second method is you if the question is given you just the IP address only, and how do you know that these IP addresses is from which network? So, you have to do the ending operation. Okay, so this is the answer. By performing the end operation on the destination IP address and its own subnet mask. So, you need to identify what is the IP addresses of the destination IP that you would like to route to and also the subnet mask. Okay, for example, here. I have the IP address of 192.168.10.4, which is PC2, okay? And the subnet mask is uh, 255.255.255.0, okay? So when I want to do the ending operation, I would like to check this IP address 192.168.10.4 is belongs to which network? Either it belongs to 192.168.10.0 or 11.0 or 12.0 or 13.0. Sometimes the question might not give you a topology. It will just give you these questions, which is the IP addresses and subnet mask, and to identify whether it belongs to the which network. So you can do the ending operation. Now, how to do the ending operation? I already list down the binary bits here. That means if I want to know this 192.168.10.4, which is a PC2, it belongs to which network address? Okay, I can do the ending operation. 192, I convert into the binary bits. I will get 11000000. Once it's 8, when I convert to the binary bits, which is all at digits, yeah, you will get 10101000. And for the 10, I convert to the binary bit, I will get 00001010. And for the 4, I, when I convert to the binary bit, I will get this. Okay, so you have to convert all these to the binary bits and to do the ending operation. Now, same goes to the subnet mask. How do I know that the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0? It's because of if uh, the question is given you slash 24, so you should have 24 ones and the rest is all zero. Okay, now we're going to do the ending operation. Only ending operation means that 1 times 1 is equal to 1, 1 times 1 is equal to 1, 1 times 0 is equal to 0. Any value times 0, okay, you will get the answer is 0. 1 times 0, you'll get 0 and so on. So at the end, you will get these final answers, right? You will have 1 times 1 is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 times 0 is 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 0. So you do this ending operation until you will get the last result that I highlighted here in the red color. And you convert it to the decimal point, you will get this answer. 192.168.10.0 So in other words, this 192.168.10.4 IP addresses is fall on the category of 192.168.10.0 network. Okay, so you have to do the ending operation. Now, if I want to test, you can do as your homework for yourself. Now, if I have 192.168.11.6, 
okay, for this router 1 interface, I would like to know this 192.168.11.6, whether that belongs to the same default gateway of my PC1, I can do the ending operation. That means you convert 192.168.11.6 to the binary and do the ending operation with your subnet mask. In this case, you will have 24 ones and the rest is all zero. So you do the ending operation, then you will come up with the answers. So basically, the answers will be 192.168.11.0. So 11.0 compared with your 10.0, they are not belongs to the SAM network. So in this case, you need a default gateway to configure at the PC if you want to route from one network to another network. Okay? Now, let's look at the second questions. When PC1 sends a packet to PC2, right? PC1 is here. Okay, let me just draw uh, the broadcast domain. This is one broadcast domain. When you draw the broadcast domain, you will see very clearly whether they belong to the same broadcast domain or different broadcast domain. Okay, so this is exactly the examples that given to you and explained just now in my previous slides. So answering these questions, when PC1 sends a packet to PC2, PC1 to PC2, they belong to the SAM network, right? The packet is forward, forwarded out the host interface to switch and the switch forward it to the destination address. The router does not need to get involved. True or false? Huh. So because that belongs to the SAM network, so the answer will be true, yes. SAM network, they do not need to have a router and you do not need to have a default gateway. Okay? Now, let's look at another question, which is question 3. When a PC1 sends a packet to PC3, again, you draw a default gateway. Router 1 to this PC1 and 2 is one broadcast domain. Router 1 to router 2, one broadcast domain. Router 2 to router 3 is one broadcast domain. And router 3 to PC3 is another broadcast domain. Now, when PC1 sends a packet to PC3, which is here, they have to go through multiple networks, right? Uh, so the packet is forwarded to the default gateway because the host device cannot communicate with devices outside of the local network. True or false? Of course, the answer will be true. So when you configure a default gateway, you should configure it here. Router 1, because router 1 is directly attached to the PC1. Okay, so your gateway address will be 192.168.10.5. So the answer is true. Okay, next. How about these questions? The default gateway is a device that routes traffic from the remote network to devices on local networks. True or false? Okay, so you should get the answers is false. Because the default gateway is a device that routes traffic from the local network, local connectivity networks, to the device on the remote networks. 